All right, so in this video, we're going to be looking at solving quadratics three ways. You've already done quadratics in the past. You've already done all three of these ways in the past. So this is revision. The three ways are factorizing, completing the square, and the quadratic formula. Now, you might be thinking, why do I need three ways to do the same thing? Each of these is useful in different ways, and you'll need to use each of these in different ways across multiple different types of problems, not just for solving quadratics, but also for doing other things as well. So... We're going to solve the same question three different ways. So here's my question, 15 equals x squared minus 8x minus 15, and I'm going to solve this first by factorising. Now, if you want to solve a quadratic by factorising, you need to make sure first it's equal to 0. So 0 is equal to x squared minus 8x minus 5, and then that 15 comes over as a negative 15. Uh, and then, just to tidy that up, Negative 5, negative 15 is negative 20. All right, so now I have a quadratic in a form that I can solve. And it doesn't matter whether you're completing the square, quadratic formula, or factorising. That's going to be your first step, always. After that, um, I'm going to show you the sort of the longer way to do this. You use something called the AC method. So this is my A value, this is my B value, and this is my C value. So A is 1 in this case, the coefficient there. B is negative 8 and c is negative 20. I find something called my ac number, uh, which is a times c, so 1 times negative 20, so that's negative 20. Uh, I find my b value, which in this case is negative 8, and I need to find two numbers that, when multiplied together, make my ac number, and when added together, make my b value. So think, think, think. Um, 10 and 2. 10 and 2. And to multiply two numbers together and make them um, negative, I'm going to have to make the larger number negative because negative 10 plus 2 will make negative 8. All right, so my two magic numbers here for the AC method is negative 10 and positive 2. This is also sometimes called the decomposition method, because at this stage you decompose the b value. So now it's going to be 0 equals x squared. Um, I'm decomposing, so it's negative 10x, positive 2x. So that negative 8 becomes negative 10. Sorry, that arrow should sort of go that way a bit. And positive 2x, and then negative 20. All right, now I group my first two terms, and I find a common factor. Uh, now, the common factor for x squared and negative 10x is simply x, and x times x will make x squared, and x times negative 10 will make negative 10x. If I've done this correctly, I'll have a repeated factor, so x minus 10 will also appear here. And then I'll multiply that by something to make positive 2x minus 20. In this case, it's positive 2. And then I group, because I've got x minus 10 and x minus 10 here, and they're being multiplied by x and positive 2, I can group those together into a bracket, and I'll have x plus 2, bracket, x minus 10. So now I know that 0 equals x plus 2, and uh, sorry, x plus 2 times x minus 10. And now I can use something called the null factor law, which says that if two things are multiplied together and the answer is 0, then this must be equal to 0, or this must be equal to 0. Therefore, x plus 2 equals 0, or x minus 10 equals 0. Therefore, x is equal to negative 2, or x is equal to positive 10. All right, I've just solved this quadratic um, by making it equal to 0, and then using my AC method to factorize it, and then using the null factor law to find two answers. There are two other ways to solve this. So this time I'm going to complete the square. Same question, 15 equals x squared minus 8x minus 5. And the first step is still the same. I need to make it equal to 0. I've just skipped a step there because we already know how to do it. All right, completing the square. It's a very formulaic, very algorithmic way of doing it. Um, first step, halve the b value and then square it. And that's just a little bit of working I can do over here in a little, like, box. So, negative 8 divided by 2, square it. So, negative 8 divided by 2 is negative 4. 
negative 4 squared is positive 16. All right. So that number is important. Now what I'm going to do is add and subtract that number. I'm going to do it in a very specific way. 0 equals x squared minus 8x. And then this is where I'm going to add and subtract it. So I'm going to add 16. I'm going to subtract 16. And then the thing that's left over here is the negative 20. All right. So by adding and subtracting it, I haven't made any material difference to the equation, but it has allowed me to break it into two component parts. This bit and this bit. All right. When we complete the square, by doing this thing, we've completed the square, which means this is going to become a perfect square. Uh, a perfect square, which is x. Um, now, whatever it is, it's in here. Not the squared bit, but just this thing that I've just drawn a square around. That's going to be in our bracket. So in this case, it's going to be negative 8 divided by 2, which is negative 4. If you expand x minus 4 squared, you'll get x squared minus 8x plus 16. That is a perfect square. That is a perfect square. They are the same perfect square. Negative 16 minus 20 is negative 36. All right, I have completed the square. Now I just need to solve this quadratic by completing the square. Do it by using your, your sad mob, by doing everything in reverse. So that negative 36 can come over here and become positive 36. Now I'm going to, this squared here, I need to get rid of that. I do that by using a square root. So it's the square root of 36. Now when you take the square root of 36, it's plus or minus, and that's where we're going to get our two answers from. Um, which means, I'll just move this equal sign over a little bit. It's nice when they line up, but this negative 4, I can move that to this side, becomes positive 4, and I have 4 plus or minus the square root of 36. Which is just, actually, not the square root of 36, but we can make that far, far simpler by just calling it 6. So that means that x is equal to 4 plus 6, or, uh, let's, put in a, let's put it underneath, or x is equal to 4 minus 6. Two answers. Therefore, x is equal to 10, and x is equal to negative 2. Answer, 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 answer. I've got the same answer two ways, so I'm probably correct. There is a third way to do it, which is the quadratic formula. All right, so here's my third method. I'm going to solve it using the quadratic formula. The first step is the same, uh, minus 20. I've moved that positive 15 to this side to become negative 15. Now I use the quadratic formula, which is negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. That's what x is going to equal. So x is going to equal all of that. And now I just sub in my values. So x is going to equal negative b, which is negative, negative 8. That's a tricky one. When you substitute for b, substitute in a bracket. You can't really make a mistake then. Um, square root, negative 8, squared again, substitute in a bracket, minus 4a. The a value is this value, which is 1. c, which is this, negative 20 all over 2 times a, which is 1. Okay, a little bit in the way there. All right, there is our substitution. Now, you could, if you are feeling really skilled with your calculator, type all of that into your calculator in one step with the plus sign, and then type all of that into your calculator with the negative sign, and you'll get two answers. Alternatively, you can type um, this part into your calculator first. If it's positive, then you know you're going to get an answer. If it's negative, you're not going to get any answers. Um, yeah, two ways to do it. Now, when you type that into your calculator, I am feeling very confident your two answers will be x is equal to 10, uh, probably when you put in the plus sign, and x is equal to negative 2. 
probably when you put it in the negative sign. All right, there is um, factorizing, completing the square, and the quadratic formula, three ways to solve. They all have their pluses and their minuses. You can talk to me about them in class, but they are things that you have done before and you should be able to do.